common problem with adjusting the stroke is that typically there's a sensor here. What Printex has done is they've put the sensor actually on the chopper. So you're, you're able to slide this, the head comes along, sees the sensor, and stops. You'll notice there's a hook here. That's for two reasons. One, so you can easily adjust the stroke, or simply that the stroke can never go past the sensing distance. And it's the same thing in the rear. You can slide it or just move the head to the position you want, but never will the chopper travel outside of the operational area of the stroke adjustment limits. And a common problem you'll see in the marketplace with other machines is the operator might slide this forward, get the head past the sensor, and then the head will violently crash to the back. This design keeps that from happening. A really nice feature of the chopper system on the Printex machine is how quickly you can traverse the knob. So if you adjust the angle, the cylinder will need to travel a greater distance. So if that's the case, you want to be able to spin the knob and quickly move up or down. And the weight of the knob, the sheer weight of the knob, allows some inertia to cause this to spin. So you can quickly traverse your distance based on your angle. And one of the unique parts of this design is it's a spring and ball with a clicking system. So if, you're, if you look at that, that extrusion has a hex in it and these balls operate with a spring and that's what keep it contained during the operation of the machine so that the knob isn't moving on its own while the chopper is going up and down. So it's a very unique design, extremely heavy duty knob system. One of the design elements of the squeegee and flood bar and the clamping system is you'll notice it's a long bar. And when you first observe it, you think, oh wow, I've got to move the squeegee a long way to get it out. Actually, you don't have to move the squeegee right to left at all. And the purpose of this design is to create enough of a gap to where you can take the squeegee or the flood bar out without making any side-to-side -side movement. And that's so that you can maximize between the frame and the squeegee flood bar with your print width. Something else I wanted to mention is because this is done electronically, in other words, the press of a button, not the flip of a metal toggle switch, anytime the machine is pressed to start, they will automatically lock in place, much like the car on your door locks. When you put it in drive, it will lock. A common operator error would be when you release the rear screen, you do your micro registration, but you forget to lock the rear screen. Because these are electronic, the machine automatically will lock the rear screen and the front screen for you. So if you have forgotten to lock those screens, you'll never have a situation where you restart the machine and you're printing and you realize, oh my goodness, I didn't lock the rear screen and I have registration problems. So it's an auto feature. The front micro system, no matter how you adjust it, this knob is always going to move truly right to left. They're not hinging on each other like other designs. Other designs, when you move it, up and down, as soon as you go to move it to the right, it will actually pivot, causing the tail of the screen to whip. Now, the Printex has a rear micro, but it really isn't necessary. The system is there, it's heavy duty, it's built, but most of every job you're gonna do, you'll be able to do it from here. So I just wanted to cover the micro. There's a direct correlation between squeegee pressure, squeegee angle. So all the Printex machines come with air pressure regulation with a gauge to control the squeegee pressure so that you can see where your squeegee pressure is. And you can obviously adjust the angle. But the printhead is designed to print in either direction. So if you want it to print in this direction or print in the other direction, you can. So you not only have full, full angle in this way, you also would have full angle this way. So you can put a flood bar where this squeegee is and a squeegee where the flood bar would be. Make sure when you're evaluating a piece of equipment that you ask the tough questions. What happens when the machine breaks? All machines break. No matter how well it's designed, no matter how well it's built, all machines break. So make sure you ask, hey, what happens when the machine stops working? How do I fix it? I've deliberately removed the screws so you can see that the entire control system is two screws. Everything is right here. Everything's color coordinated and you simply unplug it and plug a new device. Yes, electronics today, because of the cost of mass producing these type of things, the costs have come down. And because the costs have come down, this device is disposable. Believe it or not, 
You can have a few extra of these in your drawer. If there's a problem with the machine, you don't need to spend valuable production time, downtime, cost you money, valuable production time, figuring out what's wrong with the electronics. Nope, simply disconnect it, unplug your cables, put a new device, and you can worry about that offline.